All right, everybody, welcome back to the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship West Regional Elite Eight Press Conference here at Crypto.com Arena. Before we begin, a couple of reminders as a courtesy to your fellow media members and team participants, please make sure to silence your cell phones. Please provide your name and media affiliation each time you ask a question. We've got two mic holders in the room. We'll get them over to you. If you're joining us on Zoom, please make sure to use the raise hand function for questions, and we'll get to you if time allows at the end. And one final reminder, recording of this press conference on cell phones and cameras is prohibited. We now welcome Clemson head coach Brad Brownell and student-athletes Joseph Gerard III, Chase Hunter, and P.J. Hall. Coach, we'll have you begin with an opening statement, and then we're going to turn it over to questions for the student-athletes first. Yeah, just excited to be in the Elite Eight. Um, certainly a tremendous accomplishment. Uh, happy for our players. These guys have uh, been unbelievable to coach all year, and, and uh, certainly Chase and, and PJ have been with me for a long time. So very rewarding to, to get to this point, but don't want to stop now. Uh, I think we're a hungry group that uh, is playing really good basketball. We know we have a terrific opponent in Alabama. Um, they played fantastic uh, last night and beat a uh, really good Chapel Hill team. So um, we have our hands full, but we're excited for the opportunity. All right. We'll open up for questions for the student athletes. Let's start here in the front. Hey, PJ, uh, Facts and Childress, 105.5 The Roar. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about the magnitude of this moment, you know, being a premier player on a team headed to their second Elite Eight in program history, and then obviously the local ties going to Dorman High School growing up in the state of South Carolina? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's really cool, obviously. But, you know, growing up, I, I was never like a huge, you know, ba like basketball or sports watcher, so I, I, don't, I didn't realize the magnitude of – you know, what it would mean to a community to get to a, a spot like this and have the opportunity to go to the first Final Four of the school. But, you know, now that I'm here and seeing how much excitement there is back home, I mean, it's incredible the support we have. And uh, it really speaks to the culture of Clemson and the culture of the community around there. It's, uh, it's a special place to play and a, a place to go to school. It's, uh, and, you know, like I said, man, I, it's incredible. We'll go next to Jordan over here. Uh, Jordan Mendoza, USA Today Sports. Um, this question can be for any of you guys. Um, you know, Alabama's talked about, you know, they wanted to make the adjustments um, from what they saw in the first matchup they played against you guys. Um, when you guys are going over, like, trying to talk about, you know, the strategy for tomorrow, um, what are kind of some things that you guys are trying to focus on so you guys can um, not only beat them again, but advance to your first Final Four? Uh, I think for us, you know, it's kind of the same. Coaches talked to us a little bit <clears throat> um, since we found out that's who we were playing against that. You know, they're kind of a completely different team than we, they were when we played them earlier, and so are we. So, um, But obviously, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages that you had in the first game that you can use. Um, but again, you know, it's, it's, it's March now, and that was back in, what, November or December. So um, it's completely different teams, but at the same time, you just got to go in there, follow the game plan, and uh, make sure you do what you do. We'll go to the fourth row. For any of the players, uh, Jonah Krell, Arizona PBS. Uh, last night, your win against Arizona was your 12th win away from home, which set a school record. I'm just curious, and it was a pretty heavy, heavy Arizona crowd. Um, for you guys' mindset, which is, what is it about those atmospheres that gets you guys up to play? Joseph, we'll begin with you. Sorry. Um, I mean, you know, playing away from home uh, is, is a lot of fun. You know, for me personally, I know these guys as well. Um, especially with a, such an older group, you're kind of used to those environments. Um, but at the same time, you kind of thrive in them. Um, obviously, we love playing at home, love playing Little John in front of the fans, and it's a lot of fun. Um, but sometimes when you can go on the road and play in a hostile environment, it gets you kind of juices flowing a little bit even more. Um, it gets you fired up. So, uh, you know, last night was almost like an away game for us, like you said. Um, and we were just ready to go, fired up from the beginning, um, and had the mindset that we were going to go in there and, you know, try and keep the crowd as quiet as we could. Anything to add? Please. All right. Anybody else have any questions in the room here? We'll go next to the front row right here. Uh, John Blau, the Post and Courier Chase. Um, I remember talking to you in the preseason about just conditioning and wanting to kind of take that to another level, uh, mm -hmm. the ladder drills and all that. Yep. Um, the way you've been able to play late in the season, do you think it has anything to do with kind of upping that and being able to finish late in games? Uh, yeah, I would definitely give credit to conditioning. Um, you know, we did a lot of stuff this summer that 
you know, was kind of strenuous on us. And, um, you know, I think it kind of prepared us for the season. And then, you know, when you're just playing throughout the season, you, you kind of get more conditioned as the season goes. And, you know, now that we're in the later, later half of the season, my condition has definitely picked up and allowed me to, you know, play through full games. Carter, Green Green News, uh, Joe, um, it was, wasn't your best shooting night uh, last night, but you were able to impact the game uh, with your passing and playmaking. Um, what does that speak to for you to even though you're kind of known <coughs> as a, being a shooter that you're able to get the offense flowing and get, yeah, get the offense flowing? Uh, I mean, it's got a lot of great players around me. Um, and, you know, these guys make my job so much easier. Um, and, you know, uh, if I can draw two defenders sometimes, whether it's off the ball or on the ball, um, and I know I got a lot of other four great players who are out there who can put the ball in the hoop, it's, it's, it's a pretty easy job. So. Um, you know, it's kind of selling an old tournament, um, and I think it's helped us out a lot, and I think that's why we're having so much success. But at the same time, uh, the other four guys out there are pretty good as well um, and know how to put the ball in the basket. So it, it's a pretty easy game when it's 4-4. Four and four. <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, PJ, uh, how do you not make this game bigger than it is, though? Obviously, to have such a huge opportunity to get to a Final Four, like how do you mentally focus yourself to not make it too big? Uh, yeah, for me, it's it's funny. Like I was talking to our mental performance coach last night about that. Um, like w whenever I'm out on the court, I, I really don't feel the magnitude of a game, uh, whether it's you know in the Dean <clears throat> Dome or at uh, at Cameron Indoor or anything like that. Whenever I'm out on the court, uh, it's it feels like I'm just playing. Especially in a in a game like this, like whenever you're back, back home watching March Madness, like you, you feel the oh this is the Elite Eight, this is a big game, but. When you're out there going up and down the court, you're really just playing. And, um, you know, the crowds aren't insane. It's not a true road game. It's a, it's an incredible environment. But being able to know that you're just out there playing ball and keeping calm, that's the best way to go out there and continue to just have a steady pace. If you have a question here in the room, make sure to raise your hand. We'll get a mic over. Go in the back. Go ahead. Don Munson, Clemson Radio. This is for PJ, all, the three players. Describe to me the relationship that you have with, with Coach Brownell, because each of you, different little level. So kind of each one of you, give me your, describe your relationship with Coach. Well, Joseph, start. start with you. Wait, I'll, uh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I'll start. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a long journey for me and Coach. You know, I came in as a freshman, and, you know, um, you know things didn't go as well for me, but, um, you know, battled through some injuries, and you know he was he was there on my side the whole time. And, you know, I think that you know through these five years, I learned a lot from him, where it's X and O's on the court, off the court stuff, and you know, we built this big relationship. And you know, now that we're here, it's crazy. You know, it feels surreal to be in this moment after five years to to go through everything that we did. And um, yeah, but no, I appreciate Coach for everything he's done for me, and um, yeah, he's taught me a lot about the game. Uh, I think for me, obviously, it's a lot different than these guys. Um, you know, I've had to build, a, I've built a really great relationship with them, and it was pretty fast. Um, and you know, in the transfer portal, I was obviously looking for, <clears throat> you know, a good team that I could go to where I could make a run, but also wanted to go somewhere that I'd have a relationship with the coach for, you know, not just a year, but you know, for the rest of my life. Um, and that was the guy that uh, you know I put my trust in, and he put his trust in me as well. Um, and it's been nothing short. And you know, I'll, I'll know that I'll talk to Coach Brownell for forever. <laughs> Um, and have a lot of faith in you know what he does for me on and off the court because um, obviously he's made me a better player, but you know a better person as well. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat with Chase of how long I've been here with him. Um, you know, also with me, I've battled some injuries and didn't play much my freshman year either, so it wasn't necessarily I came in here it was right away making an impact. And so having that support from him for the night, for the last four years, it was always there and I always knew it. He was made it known and uh, it's funny we're on two opposite ends of the spectrum of detail oriented and uh, how, how we go about things and so it's funny like you have that but also we're right next to each other and being competitive and ready to go out there and fight and so that dynamic is really funny and you see that in the game like when he's up in my face and I'm out there trying to get the crowd going he's trying to calm me down it's, it's a it's a definitely yin and yang but it's it's special and it was, I mean, coming to Clemson and playing for him is something that would never change, you know. Go ahead, fourth row, back there. Yeah, Chase, out of the call block, here's on the PBS. Just kind of take me through, like, what was it like seeing your younger brother get that crucial steal at the end of the game with the, with the and one? Oh, uh, yeah, it was definitely big. I think a big moment for our family. You know, I looked in the crowd, I looked at my mom, and, you know, she was going crazy up there. But, uh, yeah, definitely a surreal moment, you know, um, seeing the videos and stuff. It's just... It's just crazy, you know, um, to be in this moment, to be in the Sweet 16 with my little brother, and he makes 
sort of the game winning play to finish it. Um, you know, it was definitely surreal, like I said, and you know, I'm proud of him. Any other questions for the student athletes? Well, in the front, right here, Nick. Uh, the Facts and Children's 105.5 The Roar. This is for Chase. Chase, uh, right. we're both Atlanta natives. Can you talk a little bit about just the magnitude behind what it means for the city? I saw you post on Instagram, a lot of people in the comments, obviously, yep. and then back home, everybody's showing love. Just talk a little bit about Atlanta and what it means to the city. It means a lot. You know, a lot of players on our team are from Atlanta. I think I was kind of one of the first guys to start that pipeline. And, you know, a lot of a lot of good guys have come to this team, you know, and um, have made a big impact, you know, to – for us to be putting on for the city, it means a lot. You know, I think that we all want to keep going and make more history. But, um, you know, we're all proud. I'm proud of these guys that are from Atlanta on this team that have been making impacts in games and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, we're definitely proud. And, um, you know, we're going to keep putting on for the city for sure. We'll go back to the fourth row next. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, this is the first time you're in the Elite Eight since the 79-80 team. Um, you being around Clemson for so long, has anyone um, from that team uh, spoke to you about uh, this moment? Obviously, Larry Nance was on that team. Is, has anyone from back then talked to you about uh, playing in this game? Nobody from that team. Um, certainly a lot of former players, some that I coached recently in the last you know, 10, 12, 14 years or whatnot, but then some other guys that are much older um, are certainly very proud. and. Um, you know, it's it's a great moment for our program. Certainly, we want to keep going, um, but yeah, taking these kinds of steps are are, are big ones. We know that, and uh, I think our alumni are very proud of what this team is about, both on and off the court. Do we have any questions for the student athletes here in the room? All right, we're going to go to Zoom here. AP Stedham. Yes, AP Stedham of AP and Kelly, as we see at Syndicated Radio. Uh, this question is for Chase. Chase, what are the difficulties uh, guarding someone like Mark Sears, and maybe how has he grown throughout the season since the last time that you competed against him? Um, yeah, definitely a great player. You know, someone who can create plays for himself and create plays for his teammates. I think the big thing for me is just going to be making sure I make things hard for him. Um, you know, not letting him get easy looks early and. Um, yeah, just crowding him, you know, like I've been doing the whole season with other good guards that I've played. But, um, yeah, he's a great player, like I said. And, you know, I haven't really uh, watched much since we played him. But, um, yeah, we've dug into some film. But, yeah, like I said, I'm just going to make it hard for him and, you know, play as hard as I can on defense. Do we have any other questions for the student athletes over there? This is for the three of y'all. Um, hopefully you guys, this is Merrill Mann with Tiger Net, by the way. Um, hopefully you guys have seen the footage of downtown Clemson last night. People just running wild in the streets and little John like blowing the roof off of that. What sort of energy does that give you guys for tomorrow, knowing that everybody back home is just absolutely losing it over this victory? Um, I mean, you know, it's really exciting uh, just to see uh, how much people really care about the way things are going for us in this program right now. Um, and obviously, uh, everybody always talks about Clemson football and how you know big their support is, and to know that we're getting a lot of that right now, it, it feels great. Um, and you know, Coach Barnell's built this program up, um, and you know, having the grip hit, Little John, all that kind of stuff, um, and those people there to have support um, throughout all these years and throughout this run right now is, is unbelievable. So it gives us another ju juice of energy to kind of have in the back of our minds to do it for them, um, and hopefully keep this run rolling. Any other questions for the student athletes? We got one. Go ahead. This is for all three of you. PJ, you talked about talking with us with your sports psychologist that's here with us. All right. So my guess is that he's asked you to see the moment. That he's asked you to look ahead and and see yourself doing good things. So for the three of you, what are you all envisioning in your heads? What are you envisioning in your heads tomorrow against Alabama and how you see it kind of playing out? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a, a big um, kind of think ahead type person. Like whenever I know an event's coming up, I'm trying to get too far ahead, but whenever I know a big game is, you know, coming up, I'm thinking about the possible plays within the within the play. Uh, but <clears throat> at the same time, like you also got to be able to live in the moment, and not get ahead of yourself. Like uh, one of my favorite things about the Michael Jordan documentary, The Last Dance, is is that uh, he had what so many people don't have, Michael Jordan, he was present at all times. He was always right 
in his feet, in his footsteps, you know, right there in the moment. And so being able to sit and keep your, keep your uh, nerves calm and uh, relax and know that, you know, don't get ahead of yourself. Go into these games with calm nerves. Go out there and perform. That's, uh, that's a huge thing for me as well. Yeah, I think PJ said it well, you know, just don't get too ahead of yourself. You know, just live in the moment and, you know, realize where we're at. You know, we're in Elite Eight in a big game. You know, to go to the Final Four it's, and to make history for Clemson, that would be everything. But, you know, right now we still have to play the game. And so, you know, for us, it's just going in with the same mindset. We've, we've gone into uh, every game past. And, um, you know, when we do that, then we'll, we'll be able to say that we're in the Final Four. Yeah, I'd agree uh, with both those guys, you know, in different aspects. But, uh I like to just kind of be where I'm at, obviously. Um, not look too far ahead because that's when you can kind of get tripped up. I think, you know, honestly, if you want to look at our season, you know, we've probably had a few of those moments where, you know, in the middle of the season we're, you know, on an all-time high running and uh, might have looked too far ahead and, you know, got tripped up by some in some games where maybe we shouldn't have or couldn't have. So, um, I mean, just got to try and live in the moment because this doesn't come every, you know, every year. Uh, this is my fifth year of college basketball and the first time I'm playing in the Elite Eight. So, um, you just got to live in the moment, be appreciative of where you are, um, but at the same time, know the magnitude of it and give it your all. <clears throat> Any other questions for the student athletes? All right, guys, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now continue for questions for Coach Brownell. We'll start right here in the front. Get a mic over to you. Give a second. Yeah. Uh, Darren Carter, Greenville News. Uh, coach, you always spoke about how hard like you and your, your coaching staff works. Can you just go into detail how each coach uh, kind of helps you guys day in, day out for the preparation? Yeah, we, we split things up uh, a good bit. Um, coach Bender and Coach Reynolds are kind of in charge of the offense with me. And so they're constantly, you know, working on game plans for that. Um, Coach Dolan and Coach Dixon uh, are the defensive side of the ball. And so, you know, every week I meet with them at the beginning and then meet with Coach Bender and Coach Reynolds uh, to work on the offensive game plan. Obviously, we've got a bunch of other guys behind the scenes doing doing a, a lot of different things that uh, help supplement the, the staff. But you don't get to this point unless your staff is – Terrific, and uh, I think Nate would say the same thing about his guys. We just uh, have experienced guys that have been through it. I'm very fortunate because I have some people that I've been that have been with me a long time. Coach Bender coached me in college, and I coached Coach Donlin, and Coach McKay was one of my managers at UNC Wilmington, you know, almost 20 years ago. So, um, very family feel there at Clemson basketball, and and uh, a lot of trust in those guys. We'll go next to the third row. We'll get a mic over to you. It's coming right there. Uh, Coach Kyle Kensing for uh, Flow Hoops. Uh, just kind of opening the door, uh, what I wanted to ask, you mentioned Wilmington. How did working with Jerry Wainwright kind of shape your philosophy in being a head coach and, and prepare you when you stepped into that role? Yeah, Coach Wainwright was terrific. Um, I learned a lot. I, I've had a bunch of good mentors. I worked for Jim Cruz at the University of Evansville for a year. I worked for my college coach, Royce Waltman. Uh, at the University of Indianapolis. Um, and then I got the opportunity to go work for Coach Coach Wainwright back in 1994, restricted earnings coach. And um, he just gave me a lot of freedom. I think philosophically we had a lot of the same ideas in terms of defense, both Midwest guys. He's from Chicago. I'm from Indiana. Um, so we really felt like the game should be played a certain way. And uh, – so that part of it was easy for me, and he, he quickly kind of put me in charge of the defense, and I think that really helped me grow as a coach. Uh, but more than that, I probably learned just more about how to run a program. Um, he, he was a tremendous speaker, fundraiser, unbelievable relationships with the players, um, very good recruiter. And so just I just saw all the different things that he was good at. And uh, I also saw the fact that he, he delegated, right? He, he, he gave his assistants – uh, freedom to be involved and uh, obviously held us accountable. But uh, I've taken some of that with me as well. So, um, you know, I, again, you don't get to these points unless you've worked for, for really good folks. And I'm very blessed that he was one of my mentors. We'll go next to Jordan over here. 
Uh, Jordan Mendoza, USA Today. Um, Coach Oates mentioned earlier um, that when you see uh, Clemson and Alabama playing in Los Angeles, you think it'd be happening in the Rose Bowl. And a lot of people online have been saying, like, oh, here we go, another Clemson-Alabama matchup. But this time it's in basketball. What does it mean to see, um, you know, the, a traditional or a school that's been known for football um, to have a team like yours that's now, like, having success in basketball? And how do you guys um, continue to manage, like, oh, like, hey, we're a football school, but also, like, we're doing something big in basketball. Yeah, I think the first thing you better realize, I'm sure Nate feels the same way, is you're the head basketball coach at Clemson or Alabama. You're not going to become a basketball school. Like, you're going to be a football school. And you better embrace that early on. And uh, that's okay with me. Um, I'm great with that. I have a great relationship with Coach Sweeney. Um, you know, I want us to be great in everything. And we are really good in a lot of sports at Clemson. I just... You know, there's a pressure you feel because you want to have as good of programs as your your the other coaches have, right? Coach Noonan in soccer has won national championships. Um, we've we've got a great group of coaches uh, in our athletic department, and uh, you know, certainly we're known as a football school, and and we'll be one forever, and uh, we're all really proud of that. But you know, I'm just doing the best I can to make our program as good as it can be. Um, and again, I'm proud of what we've been able to accomplish the last. 14 years, and certainly this year has been really special. Go next to the fourth row. Hey, Coach. Addison Kohlbach here with Arizona PBS. Over the course of the tournament, you guys have held your opponents to just 40% or less than 40% from the field. Has that been kind of a point of emphasis after that early ACC tournament loss? Yeah, we haven't been uh, – you know, I wouldn't say that we're a defensive-minded group. Um, I've got a lot of good offensive players, and I think a lot of times – Guys who that who are that way, their identity is with their offense, and certainly I embrace offense and want to be really good at both. Um, but there are times defensively we just haven't been as good as we've needed to be. And uh, you know, I have a saying that you know when it's harder than you want it to be, you find out a lot about how important something is to you. And sometimes you know defense can be really hard. And uh, when it's harder than you want it to be, sometimes you don't do it very well. And we've had some games like that. Um, I think the way we played in Washington, D.C., and, you know, we got humbled and, and did not play very well, probably our poorest performance of the season by far, probably helped us a little bit because uh, we went back to practice and had two really hard days of practice on Saturday and Sunday uh, leading into the tournament. And I think it helped me get their attention. And we've had a little bit better competitive edge here down the stretch uh, and certainly – the good defense has helped us advance. Right here in the front. Uh, John Blau with the Post and Courier. Um, Coach, in terms of Chase Hunter, like you talked about early in his career that actually taking his focus away from the offensive end and trying to get him to focus on defense, how much has that carried over in terms of the player he is now? And then also just the second part of that is stamina-wise. I mean, I remember last year he yeah. talked about wanting to improve that. How much has he improved you, would yeah. you say, over the last year there? He's improved a lot, and I – Again, that comes to my point of initially as a young player, especially Chase was completely offensive minded. And, you know, it's been a process to get him to to flip that because he's an outstanding, outstanding defensive player as well. Um, one of the big changes is when we moved Chase to the point last year, one of the things you saw was, and maybe I had to had to learn, was that your point guard has to do a lot. You know, obviously handle the ball, get you into offense, all those things, deal with, with press. But he's also probably got a guard about 50 ball screens. Um, and so there's a wearing effect there that, you know, sometimes if a guy hasn't played that position, that's different. And I think Chase went through that a lot last year. I think he's much better this year. Um, so um, he, he's completely different. I think he's much stronger, both mentally and physically. And I think you see it in his play right now. We'll keep it in the front. Go ahead. Uh, Darian Carr, the Cleveland News. Uh, this, uh, your parents were in the stands uh, yesterday for yeah. the Sweet 16. Just how special it is to have them in attendance and following along with you on yeah. this journey with your team. Yeah, it's great. I'm very blessed. Um, raised by two wonderful parents. And, uh, you know, they've had the opportunity since they retired uh, to follow our teams. And it started when I was at UNC Wilmington. They would come down there for three months. Um, they did the same thing in a different way when I was at Wright State. Um, and now, obviously, the 14 years that I've been in Clemson, they've they've come down and gotten away from the weather. And most of the time, it was just to see their granddaughters, uh, who were young at the time. But 
it's also my dad's a former high school coach and just loves to be around the game. My mom loves loves basketball, and so for them to get out of the weather and be able to spend time with their grandkids and occasionally me and, and go to games and my dad goes to practices, it's just it's what we've done. And uh, certainly it's a great story, and, and uh, for them to be a part of this with me is fantastic. We'll go next to the second row. Hey, Coach, this is Grayson Mann from TigerIllustrated.com. I just wanted to ask you about Joseph Gerard's evolution as a defender. Obviously, he's well-known as an offensive guy, but coming to Clemson, not too familiar with playing the man-to-man defense. Just how have you seen him progress on both sides of the court and just that evolution of the postseason? Yeah, I mean, it's he's obviously very willing, right? I mean, he's one of those guys that wants to be good and, and uh, knows that if he's going to play for me, that that's going to be part of the deal. And, uh, you know, he's... He's a competitive guy, so he's going to compete. Obviously, like a lot of guys, he has some physical limitations, but um, he's also a bright guy, and, and he's a guy that you know can be a play ahead because of the your basketball IQ. I think he's learned a lot. I think uh, you know it's certainly been very challenging for him in terms of a guy who hadn't played it in a long time. Uh, there's been some things he's had to catch up on, but um, again, a smart guy, a tough, competitive guy who's willing is going to be fine, and he's done a very good job for us. Come back to the front here. John Bland with the Post and Courier. Um, Joe Girard yesterday got a FaceTime call from Dabo in the locker room. I guess how much have you been able to communicate with Dabo during this run, and what's his words to you been like? <laughs> um, yeah, a lot. Not not a lot throughout the tournament. Uh, about three times yesterday, um, leading into the game once or twice, and then after the game, uh, you know, got a text from him and then another text first thing this morning. And I think there's a lot of jockeying going on between some of his uh, friends who are Bama fans. Uh, there might be even a few dinners bet uh, with some of his, his old cronies because he, he told me this morning that we really need to win. Uh, but obviously we have a great relationship. Um, you know, he took me under his wing when I first got to Clemson. He was, you know, maybe in year two. Um, we've we've spent a lot of time together over the years and and uh you know he's a huge basketball fan and uh thinks he's a good player um loves to play so you know it's just it's fun uh we enjoy each other's company play golf some together um have, have vacation occasionally with each other and our families so they're just great people i mean that's one of the best things about being at Clemson is we just have so many good folks uh, in our department, certainly in our, in our community. Uh, you just really enjoy being a part of it. And uh, Dabo is one of the guys that makes everybody feel welcome. Um, we all know who he is and how famous he is and all that. Uh, but to us, he's just a regular guy. Go next to third row. Josh Peter with USA Today. Alabama's finished really strong in the last two games. And held it together during down the, down the stretch. I guess that's not the case. Uh, it was not the case during the non-conference schedule. What's changed about them, and how do you potentially combat it? I think they've just gotten better. Um, some of it is, you know, Grant Nelson looks more comfortable. Um, obviously, the way he played in the last 10 minutes of the game last night was remarkable. Uh, probably made himself a lot of money. Um, he's, you know, we played him early on, and he was still kind of, feeling it out. I'm sure Nate was doing the same. Everybody's, we're all trying to put our teams together. You know, we think we're good at this. We're not sure about that. Um, you know, they, they've just done an unbelievable job. Nate's done a terrific job at Alabama. I mean, the way they've played and what they've accomplished these last several years, remarkable. Um, I know how hard it is. And uh, their guys play with tremendous freedom and confidence against, you know, tremendous offensive swagger. They look to seem. They seem like they've gotten better defensively the longer the year's gone, which um, we all hope we do. Uh, but I just think it's a product of good coaching, and uh, you know they're playing their best basketball right now when it matters most. Any other questions here in the room? We'll go back to the front row. John Blah, the Post and Courier. Um, in terms of the moment, obviously Clemson's never been here before. Um, how do you like kind of what is your message to them in terms of how to not make it too big or yeah. how, how do you frame that for them? Yeah, I, I just uh, I've talked about this with our team for a long time this year. I, I told our team early on that I thought we were good enough to make a final four, um, you know, and it was really when we were struggling in January and I was a little upset with them. I thought they 
were a little full of themselves. Um, they weren't listening and being quite as coachable as they maybe should be at times. We were different. We had a different feeling from November and December. And quite frankly, we got smacked in the mouth a few times. And, uh, you know, we were four and we had a stretch where we started the league four and six. And I kind of told our guys, this is a turning point. We go four and six down the stretch, we won't make the tournament. And I said, I, I've only told two teams that I've coached at Clemson that I thought they were good enough. Our 18 team was good enough. And if Dante Grantham didn't tear his ACL, we might have made it. Um, and my guys understand because I'm real with them. Um, they know when I'm upset. They know, you know, it's straight talk. And uh, so I think they understood that and it hit home that, man, coach thinks we're really good, but, like, we're blowing this opportunity. And so we just had to, like, kind of stick with it. There's going to be growing pains. There's going to be ups and downs during seasons. Um, and so I say that to say that this isn't the first time we've ever thought about it or talked about it. Um, it probably didn't seem, you know, realistic maybe back then, and maybe it didn't seem realistic to some guys at the beginning of the tournament, especially after the ACC tournament. But there is a quiet confidence about our group. Um, you know, our guys are good players. I think they know that. They know that I think that they're good players. And when I think that we play the right way and, and, and uh, play at a high level, we can play with just about anybody in the country. We've proven that. Um, and we're certainly going to have to do that tomorrow to win. Any other questions here in the room? All right, let's go over to Zoom. AP Stedham. Hi, Coach. This is AP Stedham of AP and Kelly, as we see it, syndicated radio. Coach, you've played uh, Alabama a couple times now, and I guess the last four years. Uh, there's been some consistencies in the outcome of eight point difference, and you've held them below their average. What's been your key to defeating a Nate Oaks coach team? I don't know about all that. It's, you know, we played well. Um, you know, I, those games don't matter. They really don't. Um, you know, I, I don't know that there's anything that we've done that's special. Um, you know, sometimes you're you're a little fortunate. I, I think we've we've gotten our defense set and maybe guarded pretty well. Um, but other than that, I, I don't know that we've done anything that other teams maybe in their league didn't do. Um, certainly been excited to play those teams and their games because of how good they are. We just have a lot of respect for how good Alabama's been. And so when you get an opportunity to play good teams like Alabama, your guys are up for it. They're excited, um, you know, but there's no specific coaching thing that we've done that's, you know, been any different than what other people have probably tried to do. Any other questions here in the room or on Zoom? Looks like we got another one from AP. Go ahead. Hey, Coach AP Stedham again. Coach, uh, you spoke about Grant, and what are some of the things he's doing much better now than the first time when you competed against him? I don't know. He just looks more confident. Um, you know, certainly was very aggressive last night. Um, had a phenomenal year. Made a bunch of winning plays. Um, I mean, he shoots the ball. He drives the ball with size. He plays with force defensively he seems to adjusted you know better to the the level I mean it's a it's a natural change that a lot of guys have to uh, adapt to um, you know he's he's just a terrific player man is he good and uh, he's playing to his level all right and final call for questions here you what go ahead front row John Blount with the Post and Kerr. Um, Joe Girard obviously was one for five last night, mm -hmm. uh, but there was actually on the uh, inbounds pass that PJ dunked it. It looked like his gravity kind of caught the defender, and PJ was able to cut. Like, how much does he open things up for you guys yeah. in terms of that? No, he does. Yeah, he does a lot. I think, you know, just him being on the floor, he's going to be guarded hard. So that's going to create space for Chase to drive or us to post Ian and PJ and. I mean, it's just natural. You have to guard the guy because he's got a, a quick trigger. Um, and obviously there are times in screening action when he draws two um, to take away his shot. And, you know, sometimes you can slip. And we, we got a couple of those last night, um, which were, were key down the stretch. So, 
you know, his willingness to pass, his willingness to when he's got two on the ball to get rid of it, his poise. You know, I think you appreciate his basketball IQ when you see him every day as a player and are around him. Um, he's got a really good feel for the game, and and uh, certainly those assists last night were a big part of the the win. All right. Any other questions? Thanks, Coach. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thank you all.